It was a cold, clear evening as Officer Luke Anders began his routine patrol in the quiet neighborhood. For Luke, the streets were familiar, and the silence of the night was comforting. Over the years, he had grown used to the rhythm of his job. Routine stops, occasional disturbances, but mostly uneventful nights. This part of town didn't usually stir trouble after dark, and that made his job easier. He cruised slowly through the streets, his eyes scanning for anything out of the ordinary. The night seemed peaceful, just like every other. But as Luke approached the local playground, something caught his attention. The headlights of his squad car illuminated the jungle gym and swings, casting long shadows across the ground. At first glance, everything seemed normal, but a subtle movement near the slide made him pause. His grip on the steering wheel tightened slightly as he leaned forward, trying to get a better look. The soft breeze rustled the leaves of nearby trees, but there was something else. A figure, small and unmoving, curled under the slide. He pulled the car over and stepped out cautiously, the gravel crunching under his boots. As he approached the playground, the faint outline of a child came into focus. His heart skipped a beat, not from fear, but from a sense of worry that started to grow in his chest. What was a child doing out here so late at night? Luke was no stranger to difficult situations, but something about this scene felt off. His instincts kicked in. He had to approach carefully. Walking closer, Luke noticed the figure more clearly. A little girl, no older than eight or nine, curled up under the slide, fast asleep. Her clothes were worn, her shoes barely held together, and there was no sign of any adult nearby. Luke felt a pang in his chest. This wasn't just unusual. It was heartbreaking. He crouched down a few feet away, careful not to startle her, and observed the tiny rise and fall of her chest as she slept. The question echoed in his mind. Why is she out here? For a moment, Luke stood there, unsure of what to do. He had dealt with homeless individuals before, even kids in rough situations, but this felt different. She looked so fragile, so alone. The officer and him wanted to call it in, to follow protocol, but the human in him knew he needed to approach this gently. He crouched down, lowering himself to her level, trying to think of how best to wake her without scaring her. Hey, sweetheart, Luke said softly, his voice just loud enough to stir her from sleep. The girl shifted slightly, her eyelids fluttering open. For a split second, there was confusion in her eyes, and then fear. She scrambled backward, pressing herself against the cold metal of the slide as she stared at him wide-eyed and trembling. Luke raised his hand slightly, palms up, showing her he meant no harm. It's okay, he said in the gentlest tone he could manage. I'm not here to hurt you. The fear in her eyes was something Luke had seen before in other children, children who had been through things no one should ever experience. He felt his throat tighten. My name is Luke, he continued, his voice calm and steady. I'm a police officer. I just want to make sure you're okay. She didn't respond, but she didn't run either. That was something. She was clearly scared, but there was a flicker of recognition in her eyes. Luke waited, giving her space, knowing that trust would come slowly. After a few moments, the girl's breathing slowed, and she seemed to relax slightly. What's your name? He asked gently, keeping his voice soft. She hesitated, her eyes darting to the badge on his uniform before she whispered, Leah. Luke smiled though his heart ached. It's nice to meet you, Leah, he said. Can you tell me why you're out here all alone? Her eyes dropped to the ground, and Luke knew this wasn't going to be an easy story to hear. Leah's silence hung heavy in the air, her small frame hunched over as if she were trying to disappear into the shadows. Luke waited patiently, his heart already breaking at the sight of this little girl who seemed so lost and afraid. He could see the hesitation in her eyes, the struggle to decide whether or not to trust him. It wasn't unusual for kids in tough situations to be wary of police, especially if they'd been let down before. Leah, are you hungry? Luke asked, changing the subject for a moment. He thought maybe offering her something comforting would help ease the tension. Leah didn't answer, but the slight glance she gave him told him enough. He stood up slowly, backing away a few steps to give her space, and walked to his car. Opening the door, he grabbed the snack he always kept on patrol, granola bars and water. Nothing fancy, but it was something. He returned to her and crouched down again, 
holding out the bar and water bottle. For a moment, Leah stared at him, her eyes darting between his face and the food. Hunger finally won out, and she reached out cautiously, grabbing the granola bar and water. She unwrapped it quickly and took a small bite, as if she was used to eating sparingly. Luke's heart sank further, but he didn't let it show. Instead, he kept his tone light. You can have more if you're still hungry, he said softly, watching as Leah nibbled on the bar with deliberate slowness. As she ate, Luke kept his distance, waiting for her to speak. Slowly, the rigid fear in her posture began to ease, though she still kept her guard up. Where's your family, Leah? he asked gently, trying again. This time, she didn't look away, but the sadness in her eyes deepened. My mom's gone, she whispered, barely loud enough for him to hear. Luke felt a lump form in his throat. He didn't push her for more. Not yet. He just sat there, quietly waiting for her to tell him what had happened. Luke took a deep breath, keeping his emotions in check as Leah's words echoed in his mind. My mom's gone. He knew there was a world of pain behind those simple words, but he also knew that trust had to be earned. For now, Leah seemed more comfortable eating in silence, so Luke decided to stay quiet and wait. He'd been trained for this, though it never got easier, getting people, especially kids, to open up when they were hurting. The playground around them was eerily quiet, the swings gently swaying in the evening breeze. Luke could feel the coldness of the night settling in, and he couldn't help but wonder how many nights Leah had spent out here, alone, vulnerable to the elements. His mind raced with questions. Where had her mother gone? How long had Leah been on her own? And why hadn't anyone noticed this before? He couldn't shake the feeling of failure, even though this was the first time he'd come across her. Leah, he said softly after a few more minutes passed, I'm going to help you, okay? But I need to know a little more. When did you last see your mom? Leah swallowed hard, not meeting his eyes. She shifted on the ground, hugging her knees tightly to her chest. A few days ago, she whispered. She said she was going to find work, but she didn't come back. Luke's heart clenched. He could see the pain in her expression, the worry and fear that no child should ever carry. He reached out slightly, keeping his movements slow and careful. I'm sorry, Leah, he said, his voice filled with genuine compassion. I can't imagine how scared you must be, but I promise I'm going to do everything I can to help you find your mom and make sure you're safe. Leah's eyes flicked up to meet his for a brief second, and in that moment, Luke saw a glimpse of hope. It was fragile, barely there, but it was enough to show that maybe, just maybe, Leah was beginning to trust him. Leah's gaze darted around the playground, never settling on Luke for long. It was as if she was trying to find an escape, a way to run from the truth she'd just revealed. Her small, tired body curled in on itself, making her look even more vulnerable. Luke could see the fear in her eyes, fear of what had happened to her mother, fear of what would happen next, and fear of trusting anyone, even someone who wanted to help. Luke knelt down again, keeping his movements slow and deliberate, making sure not to startle her. It's okay, he reassured her softly. You don't have to be afraid right now. I'm here, and I won't leave you alone. But Leah didn't seem convinced. She kept glancing toward the street, as if waiting for someone, anyone, to come and take her away from this strange man in a uniform. Her eyes were wide, full of uncertainty. Luke felt a sharp pang of guilt. He had always known that being a cop came with baggage. People often feared him before they ever knew him. And now, looking at Leah's frightened eyes, he saw that distrust reflected in the face of a little girl. It hurt him in a way he hadn't expected, but he wasn't about to let that stop him. He took a deep breath and stayed patient, knowing that building trust with Leah would take time. As the minutes ticked by, Leah's nervous glances began to slow. She was still scared, but she wasn't bolting. That was something. Luke stayed close but didn't push her to talk anymore. He let the silence linger between them, hoping that in time, Leah would feel safe enough to open up further. He knew she was fragile, and he wasn't about to shatter whatever slivers of trust they were starting to build. Eventually, Leah's grip on her knees loosened and she looked up at Luke with a little more curiosity than fear. It was a small change, but Luke noticed. He took that as a sign to try again. Do you want to tell me about your mom? He asked gently, 
his tone calm and steady. He didn't expect her to open up fully, but maybe, just maybe, a little more of her story would come out. Leah hesitated, her eyes flickering with uncertainty. But then she nodded slowly, almost as if the weight of keeping her story inside was becoming too much. She always said she'd come back, Leah whispered, her voice barely audible. But I don't think she's coming back this time. Her words hung in the air like a heavy cloud, and Luke's heart ached at the raw emotion in her voice. The innocence in her was fading, replaced by the hard truths of a world no child should have to face. Luke nodded, staying silent for a moment, allowing Leah's words to sink in. He could feel the deep sadness in her, the loss that went beyond just a missing parent. It was the loss of stability, safety, and trust. Sometimes things happen that we can't explain, Luke said softly. But I want you to know, Leah, you're not alone in this. We'll figure out what happened, okay? You don't have to go through this by yourself. Leah glanced up at him, her big brown eyes filled with a mixture of hope and hesitation. Do you really think we can find her? She asked, her voice trembling. Luke didn't have all the answers, but he knew he couldn't let her down. I don't know what's going to happen, he admitted honestly, but I promise I'll do everything I can to help you. We'll start by making sure you're safe tonight. No more sleeping outside, okay? Leah didn't say anything but the slight nod she gave was enough for Luke to feel like he was finally getting through to her. The night was growing colder, and Luke knew they couldn't stay at the playground much longer. Leah needed warmth, shelter, and security, things she clearly hadn't had in days. But he also knew that taking her to the station right away might overwhelm her. The last thing he wanted was for Leah to feel more scared or cornered. He had to tread carefully, balancing her immediate needs with her emotional state. I know this is a lot, Luke began, keeping his voice calm and measured, but we need to find a place for you to stay tonight. There's a shelter not far from here, where we can make sure you're safe. They'll have food, a warm bed, and people who can help. Leah's face remained guarded, but there was a flicker of relief in her eyes at the mention of warmth and safety. Still, Luke could tell she wasn't fully convinced. She glanced at the ground, biting her lip nervously. Luke crouched down again, meeting her eye to eye. I'll be with you the whole time, he promised. You won't be alone. I know this is scary, but I need you to trust me. Can you do that? Leah hesitated, the silence stretching between them. Her small hands gripped the edge of her shirt as if she was trying to hold on to something stable in an unstable world. Finally, she gave a small nod, the trust fragile, but there. Okay, Luke said, his voice full of quiet relief. He stood up slowly, offering his hand to Leah. For a moment she just looked at it, her brow furrowing as if trying to decide whether to take it. Then cautiously, she reached out and placed her tiny hand in his. It was a small gesture, but to Luke, it meant everything. It was a step, one small step toward helping Leah find safety, and hopefully, the beginning of healing. As they walked toward Luke's patrol car, Leah's steps were slow, as though each one was filled with uncertainty. Luke kept his pace gentle not rushing her, allowing her to move at her own speed. He opened the car door for her and watched as she climbed in, her eyes scanning the interior of the car with a mixture of curiosity and fear. She hadn't been in a police car before, and the unfamiliar environment seemed to unsettle her. Luke got in the driver's seat and turned to her. You're doing great, Leah, he said, offering a small, encouraging smile. I know this is a lot to take in, but you're safe now. We'll figure this out together. Leah didn't respond, but she nodded slightly, her small hands resting tensely in her lap. Luke could feel the weight of her silence, and he didn't push her to talk more than she was ready for. As they drove toward the shelter, Luke tried to piece together more of Leah's story. How long have you been out here, Leah? He asked softly, keeping his tone as gentle as possible. She hesitated, staring out the window as if the world passing by held answers she couldn't grasp. I don't know she whispered. A few days, maybe more. It's hard to keep track. Her voice was filled with uncertainty, and Luke could tell she had been fending for herself for far longer than any child should have to. Luke's heart clenched as he listened. A few days alone, sleeping in a playground, with no one noticing or offering help. It was unimaginable, yet it was her reality. 
Leah's story was beginning to unfold, and with every piece of it, Luke felt his determination to help her grow stronger. This little girl had been through so much, and now it was his turn to make sure she didn't go through any more pain alone. As Luke drove through the quiet streets, Leah's words lingered in the air, leaving an unsettling heaviness between them. He couldn't shake the image of her, so small and vulnerable, sleeping under that cold playground slide, her only shelter against the world. How could no one have noticed her? How could this little girl have slipped through the cracks so easily? The questions gnawed at him, and a deep sense of responsibility took hold. Leah's presence stirred something inside Luke that he hadn't felt in a long time, an acute awareness of the fragility of life. He had seen a lot during his years on the force, but nothing like this. A child, abandoned in plain sight. His usual tough exterior was starting to crack. The silence in the car, broken only by the occasional sounds of the road, gave him too much time to think. How many other children were out there, lost and alone, just like Leah? He glanced over at her again, her small frame barely visible in the shadowed seat. She was staring out the window, eyes wide and unfocused, lost in her own thoughts. Luke swallowed hard. He knew that bringing her to the shelter was only a temporary solution, and that realization hit him like a punch to the gut. Leah needed more than just a warm bed and a meal. She needed a family. She needed to feel safe in a way that no shelter could truly provide. Luke's mind raced, thinking about what could be done for her in the long term. But right now, all he could do was focus on the present getting her somewhere warm and safe for the night. His heart ached for this little girl, and for the first time in years, he felt powerless. He had never thought much about what happened to children like Leah after their cases left the police's hands. But now, with her sitting beside him, it was impossible to ignore. As they neared the shelter, Luke's mind was still churning with questions. He wanted answers. Where was Leah's mother, and why had no one come looking for this little girl? But he also knew that Leah might not have all the answers herself. She was just a child, caught in a situation far beyond her control. Luke parked the car outside the shelter, but before getting out, he turned to Leah. Her eyes were still glued to the window, her small hands clasped tightly in her lap. Leah, he said softly, I need to ask you something. She didn't respond at first, but after a moment, she glanced over at him, her eyes wary. Do you have anyone else? Anyone we can call, family, a friend, someone who knows where your mom might be? The question hung in the air, and for a moment Luke thought she might shut down again. But then she shook her head slowly. No, she whispered. It's just me and her. Luke nodded, though the answer left him feeling hollow. Leah's mother was her only family, and now that she was gone, Leah had no one. Luke tried to imagine what it must feel like for her, so young and already having to carry the weight of being alone. It was a burden that no child should have to bear. Okay, Luke said gently. We'll figure this out together. I'm not going to leave you alone, I promise. Leah's eyes lingered on him for a moment longer, as if weighing the truth of his words. She looked so small, so fragile, sitting in that passenger seat. Luke's heart ached with the weight of it all. There were no easy answers here, no quick fixes. All he could do was keep his promise and hope that it was enough to start healing the wounds she carried. When they reached the shelter's entrance, Leah hesitated. Her small body was still, and she seemed reluctant to leave the car. Luke watched her closely, sensing the internal battle she was fighting. The shelter was meant to be a safe place, but for a girl who had been surviving on her own, trusting anyone, even in a place meant to help, must have felt terrifying. Luke understood that fear. He had seen it before in others. But this was different. It was deeper, more personal. He walked around to her side of the car and opened the door, crouching down to meet her eye level. It's okay, Leah, he said, his voice soft and reassuring. I'll stay with you. We'll go in together, and I'll make sure everything's all right. Leah looked at him, her wide eyes filled with uncertainty. For a moment, it seemed like she might refuse like the thought of stepping inside was too much. But then she slowly reached for his hand again. Luke felt a surge of relief as her tiny fingers wrapped around his. She was vulnerable, yes, but there was a quiet strength in her as well, 
a strength that had kept her alive, kept her moving forward, even when the world had let her down. He stood up, holding her hand gently, and together they walked toward the shelter's front door. With every step, Luke's protective instinct grew stronger. Inside, the shelter was warm, a sharp contrast to the cold night air outside. Leah's eyes darted around the room, taking in the unfamiliar surroundings. The staff greeted them kindly, but Leah stayed close to Luke's side, her grip on his hand tightening. He could feel the fear radiating from her, but he also sensed something else. Hope. She was afraid, yes, but she wasn't giving up. And neither was Luke. As they sat in the shelter's office waiting for the intake process to begin, Luke couldn't stop thinking about what more could be done for Leah. The shelter was a temporary solution, a place where she could sleep safely for a few nights. But what then? The idea of Leah being shuffled into the system, lost among the many children without families, made Luke's chest tighten. He had seen it too many times, kids slipping through the cracks, their lives forever changed by a broken system. The shelter's staff began asking Leah questions, her name, age, and if she knew where her mother might be. Leah answered quietly, her voice barely above a whisper, but she didn't know much. She said she'd come back, but she didn't, Leah explained again, her words simple but heartbreaking. The staff nodded, doing their best to remain professional, but Luke could see the sadness in their eyes too. They knew as well as he did that finding Leah's mother might not be easy. Luke's mind raced, thinking about what steps to take next. He could file a missing persons report for Leah's mother, but that didn't guarantee they would find her anytime soon. And even if they did, what kind of situation had Leah been living in before this? He had so many questions, but Leah had given him so few answers. He didn't want to push her too hard, not when she was already so fragile. As the intake process wrapped up, Luke felt a deep sense of frustration. This wasn't enough. Leah needed more than what the system could offer her right now. She needed someone who cared, someone who would stay by her side through this ordeal. Luke had never seen himself as a parental figure, but as he looked at Leah, sitting so quietly and so alone, he realized that he couldn't just walk away. He couldn't leave her to face this without someone to protect her. As Luke watched Leah, quiet and withdrawn, sitting in the shelter's intake office, memories from his own past began to bubble up to the surface, memories he hadn't confronted in years. He thought about his childhood, growing up in a tough neighborhood where security was scarce and survival was often the priority. He had experienced loss too, though not in the same way as Leah. His father had been absent most of his life, leaving him to navigate the world with little guidance. It was this same sense of abandonment that Leah must have felt. Luke had learned early on how to close off, how to build walls to protect himself from the pain of neglect. He had seen too much at a young age, and it had hardened him in ways he hadn't fully understood until much later. Looking at Leah now, her small hands clutching her knees, Luke could see a reflection of his younger self, guarded, unsure of whom to trust, afraid of what might come next. These memories stirred something in Luke, a determination that had been lying dormant for too long. He hadn't let himself feel much empathy in his job for years, as it was too easy to become overwhelmed by the sadness and struggles of the people he encountered. But Leah had broken through that emotional armor, and he couldn't ignore the parallels between their stories. He didn't know exactly how, but he knew he had to do more for her than just drop her off at the shelter and walk away. The past was creeping up on him, demanding to be dealt with, but Luke was focused on the present. Leah needed someone to show her that the world wasn't all bad, that there were people who wouldn't abandon her like her mother had. And for reasons he couldn't quite explain, Luke knew that he had to be that person. He couldn't save his younger self, but he could try to save Leah from the same fate. Leah sat quietly, her body tense as she answered the shelter staff's questions. Though her responses were brief, they spoke volumes about the hardships she had faced in her short life. Every word was laced with pain, every glance tinged with uncertainty. She spoke about her mother's long absences, how sometimes she'd be gone for days, leaving Leah to fend for herself. The little girl's voice was matter-of-fact, as if she had learned to expect abandonment. 
Luke listened in silence, his jaw tightening as he absorbed each detail. The struggles Leah had faced were more than any child should ever have to endure. She had been forced to grow up too fast, shouldering responsibilities far beyond her years. Sleeping in a playground had become her normal, and the thought of it made Luke's stomach turn. How had no one seen her pain? How had the system failed her so completely? Sometimes she'd come back with food, and we'd have dinner together, Leah said quietly, her eyes downcast. But other times, I'd just wait. The image of Leah, sitting alone in the dark, waiting for her mother to return, broke Luke's heart. He couldn't imagine what it must have been like for her, night after night, waiting, hoping, and then realizing that hope wasn't enough. That realization had clearly shaped her, leaving her with walls so high that even trust was hard to come by. Luke leaned forward slightly, his voice soft but steady. Leah, I'm so sorry you've had to go through all of this. He didn't know what else to say. No words could undo the damage that had been done, but he hoped that by acknowledging her pain, it would show her that someone cared. Leah didn't say anything in response, but for the first time, she met his eyes. And in that brief moment, Luke saw the depth of her struggle. That night, after leaving Leah at the shelter, Luke couldn't shake the weight of their encounter. He had done everything he could to ensure she was safe for the time being, but it wasn't enough. As he drove through the quiet streets, the memories of her small, fragile frame and her wide, frightened eyes haunted him. The image of her curled up under the playground slide, alone in the cold, was something he couldn't get out of his mind. Luke had dealt with tough situations before, homelessness, abuse, broken families, but there was something about Leah's story that clung to him in a way nothing else had. It was more than just a sense of duty. It was personal. He felt an overwhelming need to protect her, to make sure she didn't slip through the cracks like so many others. The night felt colder, darker, as he thought about how many more children might be out there, just like Leah, lost in the world and forgotten by those meant to help them. As Luke pulled into his driveway, the exhaustion of the day hit him hard, but his mind wouldn't rest. Leah had become more than just another case. She had become a reminder of everything he had fought to overcome in his own life. And now, she was a part of his life, whether he had planned for it or not. He knew he couldn't walk away, not from this. The thought of her spending another night in a shelter, with no family to comfort her, made him feel like he was failing her, even though he had done everything by the book. That night, sleep didn't come easily. Luke tossed and turned, his thoughts returning again and again to Leah. He replayed their conversation, her quiet words, and her sad, tired face. He knew that this was the beginning of something much bigger than either of them could have anticipated. Leah's story had changed him, and now, more than ever, he felt the pull to make a difference in her life. But the question was, how? The following day, Luke found himself back at the shelter, driven by a sense of duty that had evolved into something deeper. He wasn't scheduled to check on Leah, but he couldn't stay away. There was something about her, the quiet resilience she had shown, that made him feel like he needed to be there. When he arrived, he was greeted by one of the shelter workers, who told him that Leah had been quiet but stable. It was good news, but it didn't feel like enough. As he was led into the common room where the children gathered during the day, Luke saw Leah sitting alone in the corner, hugging her knees to her chest. She looked smaller than ever, dwarfed by the oversized chair she sat in. He approached slowly, not wanting to startle her. When she looked up and saw him, her face lit up with a mix of surprise and relief. Luke felt his heart swell. She was beginning to trust him, even if she didn't fully realize it yet. Hey there, Leah, he said softly, crouching down beside her. How are you doing? Leah shrugged, her eyes darting to the floor. Okay, I guess, she mumbled. Luke didn't push her to talk. He just sat with her in the quiet, giving her the space to process everything that had happened. After a few minutes, Leah glanced at him, her brow furrowed. You came back, she said, almost as if she didn't believe it. Luke nodded. Of course I did. I told you I wouldn't leave you alone, remember? Leah's expression softened, and for the first time, Luke saw the faintest hint of a smile on her lips. It was small, barely there, but it was real. 
In that moment, Luke realized that he had formed a bond with Leah, one that went beyond his role as a police officer. He wasn't just protecting her, he was becoming someone she could rely on. In the days that followed, Leah started to come out of her shell, but only ever so slightly. She remained guarded, her small figure often huddled in a corner or keeping her distance from the other children at the shelter. Yet whenever Luke came to visit, something in her shifted. She would look up with those wide, hopeful eyes, as if silently asking if he was still there for her, if he still cared. And each time, Luke reassured her with his presence alone. But behind Leah's quiet moments of hope was an ever-present fear, one that Luke could sense but struggled to fully address. Leah had been let down before, by the world, by her mother, and perhaps even by herself. Trust wasn't something she gave easily, and Luke understood that it was fragile, as if at any moment she might withdraw again, expecting him to leave like everyone else had. Her vulnerability was palpable, even though she tried to mask it. Luke was patient, though. He never forced her to talk, only letting her open up at her own pace. They'd sit together in the common room, sometimes talking, but mostly just sharing space in silence. It became a routine. Luke would visit, and Leah would wait for him, sometimes with a small smile playing at the edges of her lips. Each day that passed, Luke could see the walls she had built around herself beginning to crack, though he knew the process would take time. One afternoon, Leah looked at Luke and asked softly, Do you think my mom will come back? It was the question he had been dreading, the one that carried the full weight of her hope and fear. Luke felt his chest tighten, and for a moment, he didn't know how to answer. He didn't want to give her false hope, but he also didn't want to break the fragile faith she had begun to place in him. I don't know, Leah, he said gently, meeting her gaze. But no matter what happens, I'll be here. You won't be alone. Leah's question about her mother stuck with Luke long after their conversation ended. He couldn't ignore the way her voice had trembled with uncertainty and how desperately she seemed to want reassurance that her mother would return. The truth was, Luke didn't know where Leah's mother was or what had happened to her, but he was determined to find out. He had made Leah a promise, and he intended to keep it. That night, after his shift ended, Luke began his search. He filed a missing persons report for Leah's mother and started making calls to local shelters, hospitals, and even police precincts in surrounding areas. It wasn't an easy task. There were thousands of cases like Leah's mother, people who had fallen off the radar, their lives slipping through the cracks of the system. But Luke was relentless. He wasn't just doing this as part of his job. He was doing it because Leah needed him to. As the days turned into weeks, the search for Leah's mother became Luke's personal mission. He juggled his regular duties as a cop with endless nights, spent following up on leads, most of which led to dead ends. It was frustrating, but Luke never let his frustration show in front of Leah. When he visited her at the shelter, he always made sure to smile and ask her how she was doing, knowing that his presence gave her some sense of stability. Leah never asked about the search directly but Luke could see the unspoken question in her eyes every time they met. She was waiting for an answer, waiting to hear that her mother had been found. And while Luke didn't have that answer yet, he wasn't giving up. He knew how much was riding on this. For Leah, it was more than just finding her mother. It was about restoring some sense of security and trust in a world that had let her down. Weeks turned into a month, and still, Luke hadn't found Leah's mother. Every lead he followed seemed to disappear into thin air, and the more time that passed, the more Luke began to worry. Leah wasn't pressing him for answers, but he knew the weight of waiting was bearing down on her. She had stopped asking if her mother would come back, and that silence spoke volumes. Luke feared that Leah was beginning to lose hope. Despite the growing pressure, Luke refused to let Leah's mother become just another name lost in the system. He dug deeper into her background, learning more about her life before she disappeared. It became clear that Leah's mother had been struggling for some time. Financial hardship, unstable housing, and a series of temporary jobs that had never panned out. It wasn't hard to see how someone in her situation could fall off the radar, but that didn't make it any less heartbreaking. Luke sat at his desk one evening, poring over files and paperwork, trying to piece together the missing puzzle that was Leah's life. The more he learned about her mother, 
the more he understood how difficult things must have been for her. She wasn't a bad person, just a woman caught in the grips of an unforgiving system. Still, Luke couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to the story, something he hadn't yet uncovered. And then one night, as Luke was about to give up for the evening, he received a call from a hospital in a nearby town. A woman matching Leah's mother's description had been admitted weeks ago, but she had been unconscious and without identification. She had remained in a coma, and no one had claimed her. Luke's heart sank as he listened to the details. It wasn't the answer he had hoped for, but at least now, he had something, another piece of the puzzle. With this new information, Luke felt both relief and dread. He finally had a lead on Leah's mother, but it wasn't the one he had hoped for. Leah's mother had been lying in a hospital bed alone for weeks, while her daughter waited and wondered what had happened to her. Luke knew he had to tell Leah the truth, but how could he explain that her mother might never wake up? It was a conversation he wasn't sure how to handle. The following day, Luke drove to the hospital to confirm the woman's identity. As he walked through the sterile hallways, his mind raced with thoughts of Leah. He knew how much this news would affect her, and it weighed heavily on him. When he reached the room, his heart sank at the sight of the woman lying still in the hospital bed, her face pale and gaunt. It was Leah's mother. There was no doubt about it. Luke spoke with the doctors, who explained that her condition was stable, but critical. There was no way to know if or when she would wake up. As the reality of the situation sank in, Luke felt a deep sadness for Leah, knowing that this wasn't the reunion she had been hoping for. Her mother was alive, but barely and the uncertainty of her recovery would leave Leah in a painful limbo. Driving back to the shelter, Luke wrestled with how to tell Leah. He had promised her that he would help find her mother, but this wasn't the outcome he had imagined. When he finally arrived, Leah was waiting for him, as she always did. Her eyes were filled with that familiar mixture of hope and fear. Luke knelt down beside her and took a deep breath. Leah, he began gently, I found your mother. He saw the hope flicker in her eyes, but then he hesitated, unsure how to deliver the rest of the news. Leah's expression changed the moment Luke explained her mother's condition. The initial spark of hope in her eyes dimmed as the weight of the situation became clear. Leah didn't cry or ask any questions. She just sat there, her small body frozen with shock. Luke's heart broke for her, but he knew there was little he could do to ease the pain she must have been feeling. It was a devastating reality, one that Leah wasn't prepared to face, and neither was he. As the shelter staff helped Leah process the news, Luke began to grapple with the bureaucratic side of things. The system wasn't built for situations like this, where a child was left in limbo while their only parent was incapacitated. Leah's future was uncertain, and that uncertainty gnawed at Luke. He knew that without intervention, Leah would likely end up in foster care separated from her mother indefinitely. The thought of Leah being shuffled into the foster system filled Luke with frustration. He had seen too many kids lost in that maze, forgotten by the very people meant to protect them. Leah deserved better than that. She deserved a home, stability, and most of all, love. But the system wasn't designed to prioritize those things. It was designed to manage crises, not solve them. And right now, Leah was stuck in the middle of a crisis that had no easy solution. Luke knew he couldn't give up on her. He had become more than just a police officer checking in on a vulnerable child. He had become someone Leah relied on, someone she trusted. The idea of letting her down now, of letting the system fail her again, wasn't an option. But what could he do? He wasn't a guardian or a relative. He was just a man who had stumbled into Leah's life, and now, he was determined to stay. As the days passed, Leah's silence became more pronounced. She had always been quiet, but now, after learning about her mother's condition, it was as though she had retreated entirely into herself. Luke visited the shelter every day, but each time he saw her, she seemed a little smaller, a little more withdrawn. He tried to bring her small comforts, a new book, a warm blanket, snacks, but nothing seemed to reach her. Leah was losing hope and Luke could feel it slipping away, just as surely as he had seen it fade in so many others before. But Luke wasn't ready to give up. He spent hours researching options, 
speaking with social workers and advocacy groups, trying to find some way to give Leah a chance at a better life. The system was slow and filled with roadblocks, but Luke kept pushing. He contacted doctors about her mother's condition, hoping for a glimmer of good news. The answers he received were always the same. Her condition was stable but unchanged. It wasn't the hope he had been looking for, but it wasn't a complete loss either. Leah's mother was still alive, and as long as there was life, there was hope. One evening, Luke found himself sitting in his car outside the shelter, staring at the dashboard as he wrestled with his emotions. He had never felt so helpless. Despite all his efforts, the system wasn't moving fast enough, and Leah's pain was only growing. He couldn't stand to see her suffer like this, but he didn't know what else to do. As he sat there, a thought crossed his mind. What if he didn't wait for the system to work? What if he did something more direct? The idea lingered in his mind, and though it scared him, it also gave him a sense of purpose. He wasn't a social worker or a legal guardian, but he was someone who cared deeply about Leah's well-being. Perhaps that was enough. Luke realized that sometimes hope came from unexpected places, from people who were willing to go beyond their roles to make a difference. And as he thought about Leah, alone and afraid, he knew that he had to be that person for her. The decision to do more for Leah than just visit her at the shelter weighed heavily on Luke. He knew that stepping into her life in a deeper way would change everything for both of them. But as the days passed and Leah's eyes grew sadder, he realized that he couldn't keep standing on the sidelines. He had always been someone who followed the rules, kept his distance, and never got too emotionally involved in his cases. But Leah had broken through all of that and now Luke was grappling with emotions he hadn't expected to feel. He found himself thinking back to his own childhood more often, remembering the times when he had felt abandoned and alone. His mother had done her best, but life had been hard, and there were moments when Luke had been left to fend for himself. Those experiences had shaped him, made him the man he was today. And now, seeing Leah in a similar situation, Luke felt a deep, personal connection to her pain. He understood what it was like to feel like no one was coming to save you. One evening, after a particularly difficult day, Luke sat in his living room, staring at the old family photo he kept on the mantel. It was a picture of him as a child, standing next to his mother, both of them smiling despite the hardships they had faced. Luke hadn't thought about those days in a long time, but now the memories came flooding back. He realized that Leah needed someone who could not only protect her, but also understand her in a way that went beyond the professional. The next morning, Luke made a decision. He wasn't going to wait for the system to work things out for Leah. He wasn't going to let her become another statistic, lost in the bureaucratic shuffle. He would step in personally and make sure she was taken care of. It was a big step, and it scared him. But it also felt like the right thing to do. Leah had been abandoned by the world, but Luke wasn't going to abandon her. Not now, not ever. Luke's first step was to talk to the shelter staff about what more could be done for Leah. He explained that he wanted to take on a more active role in her life, not just as a cop, but as someone who cared deeply about her future. The staff were surprised but supportive. They knew how much Luke had invested in Leah's well-being, and they could see the bond that had formed between the two of them. They agreed to help him navigate the legal process, though they warned him that it wouldn't be easy. Becoming more involved in Leah's life meant going through the proper channels, legal guardianship, foster care arrangements, and all the paperwork that came with it. Luke wasn't naive. He knew this would be a long and difficult journey. But for Leah, he was willing to take on whatever challenges came his way. She needed more than just a temporary fix. She needed stability, love, and someone who was willing to fight for her, and Luke was ready to be that person. As Luke began the process, he noticed a change in Leah. She seemed more at ease, more open. There were still moments when she withdrew, when the sadness in her eyes was almost too much to bear. But there were also moments of hope, small, fleeting smiles and brief conversations where she let her guard down just a little. It wasn't much, but it was progress and Luke held on to those moments like they were precious. Leah didn't ask Luke about her mother anymore. It was as if she had come to terms with the uncertainty of her situation. 
But Luke knew that the absence of her mother still weighed heavily on her heart. He made sure to remind Leah every day that she wasn't alone, that she had people who cared about her. And little by little, Leah began to believe him. The walls she had built around herself were still there, but they were starting to crumble piece by piece. As the weeks turned into months, Luke continued his mission to secure a more permanent place for Leah. The legal process was slow and filled with obstacles, but Luke's determination never wavered. He knew that Leah's future was fragile, balanced precariously on the decisions being made by a system that often failed the very children it was meant to protect. But Luke wasn't going to let that happen to Leah. He was her advocate now, and he would make sure she had a future filled with hope. Leah, meanwhile, was slowly starting to adjust to the idea that her life might be changing for the better. She still had moments of doubt, times when she would ask Luke if he would disappear like everyone else had. But each time, Luke reassured her that he wasn't going anywhere. I'm here for you, Leah, he would say, his voice filled with conviction. No matter what happens, I'm not going to leave you. And each time, Leah's eyes would soften and she would nod, though the fear of abandonment never completely left her. Luke knew that their journey wasn't over yet. There were still legal hurdles to clear, and the uncertainty of Leah's mother's condition hung over them like a dark cloud. But for the first time in a long time, Luke felt hopeful. He had found a purpose in helping Leah, a purpose that went beyond his badge and his duty as a cop. He had become someone she could rely on, someone she could trust, and that trust was something he would never take for granted. The future was fragile, but it was also filled with possibility. Luke had seen firsthand how the world could fail, children like Leah, how they could be left behind and forgotten. But he also knew that with the right support, with love and care, Leah could build a new life for herself. And he was determined to be there with her every step of the way, no matter how long it took. As the months continued, Leah began to open up more. There were moments, rare but precious, where she would let down her guard and share her thoughts with Luke. They would sit together in the common room of the shelter, or sometimes outside in the small courtyard, and Leah would talk quietly about her dreams, about the kind of life she wanted, the things she wished she could do. She spoke of simple things, like going to school, having a safe place to sleep, and maybe even having a family someday. But with those dreams came deep-rooted fears. Leah had spent so much of her young life alone and abandoned that it was hard for her to believe in a future where things would be different. She still worried that Luke would leave, that the shelter would be her home forever, or that her mother would never wake up. The weight of those fears was visible in her eyes whenever she talked about the uncertainty of her life. She still had nightmares, waking up in the middle of the night, clutching her blanket tightly as if it were the only thing keeping her grounded. Luke did everything he could to reassure her, but he knew that Leah's fears weren't unfounded. The future was still unclear, and even though he had taken steps to become more involved in her life, nothing was guaranteed. He could only promise her that he would be there, no matter what. I'll always be here for you, Leah, he told her often, and each time she seemed to cling to those words a little more. Despite her fears, Leah began to trust Luke in a way she hadn't trusted anyone else before. She still had moments of doubt, but the more time they spent together, the more she began to believe that maybe, just maybe, Luke wouldn't disappear. Her dreams of a stable, happy life began to grow stronger, and while her fears still lingered, they were no longer the only thing she carried with her. One evening, everything changed. Luke had been working late on paperwork when his phone rang. It was the hospital where Leah's mother had been staying. Luke's heart raced as he answered the call, bracing himself for the worst. But to his surprise, the doctor on the other end of the line delivered unexpected news. Leah's mother had woken up. She was weak, confused, and disoriented, but she was conscious. It was the first sign of hope in a situation that had felt hopeless for so long. Luke sat in stunned silence for a moment, absorbing the information. Leah's mother was awake. It was the news Leah had been waiting for, the moment that could change everything. But even with this development, there were still so many unknowns. How would Leah's mother recover? Would she be able to care for her daughter again? And what would this mean for Leah, who had started to build a fragile but growing bond with Luke? Luke drove to the hospital the next morning, anxious to see for himself. 
When he arrived, the doctors briefed him on her condition. She was stable but had a long road to recovery ahead. There were concerns about her ability to take care of herself, let alone Leah. Luke walked into the hospital room, his eyes immediately drawn to the frail woman lying in the bed. It was clear that she had been through a lot, but she was alive, and that gave Luke a glimmer of hope. Sitting beside her bed, Luke introduced himself and explained everything that had happened. Leah's mother listened, her eyes filling with tears as she realized how much time had passed and how much her daughter had gone through. I didn't mean to leave her, she whispered, her voice hoarse. I just couldn't come back. Luke could see the guilt and pain in her expression, but there was also a flicker of determination. She wanted to get better for Leah. When Luke told Leah that her mother had woken up, he could see the shock and disbelief wash over her. For so long she had prepared herself for the worst, had steeled herself against the possibility that her mother might never come back. But now, hearing that her mother was awake, Leah's emotions seemed to overwhelm her. She didn't know whether to cry or smile, and for a long time, she just stood there, frozen with the weight of the news. Luke knelt down beside her, his voice gentle. It's true, Leah. She's awake. She's not fully better yet, but she's getting there. Leah's wide eyes filled with tears, and she wiped them away quickly, as if afraid to show too much emotion. She's really awake, she whispered, her voice trembling. Luke nodded, offering her a reassuring smile. Yes, she's really awake, and I can take you to see her, if you're ready. Leah hesitated for a moment, her mind clearly racing. This was the moment she had dreamed of, but it was also terrifying. What if her mother wasn't the same? What if she couldn't take care of her? What if she left again? All of those fears came rushing back, but Leah also felt a deep longing to be with her mother again. She glanced up at Luke, seeking reassurance. Will you come with me? She asked softly. Luke smiled, his heart swelling with emotion. Of course, Leah. I'll be right there with you. As they prepared to go to the hospital, Leah's tears flowed freely. She wasn't sure what to expect when she saw her mother again, but the realization that she wasn't completely alone anymore was enough to bring down the emotional walls she had built. For the first time, she allowed herself to believe that maybe things could get better. When Luke and Leah arrived at the hospital, the tension in the air was palpable. Leah clutched Luke's hand tightly as they walked through the sterile hallways, her small fingers trembling with a mixture of hope and fear. Luke squeezed her hand gently, offering her silent support. They were about to face one of the most important moments of Leah's life, and Luke was determined to be by her side through all of it. As they entered the room, Leah froze at the sight of her mother lying in the hospital bed. The woman who had been her world for so long looked so frail, so different from how Leah remembered her. But when her mother opened her eyes and saw Leah standing there, a flicker of recognition crossed her face, followed by tears. Leah, she whispered, her voice weak but full of emotion. Leah hesitated for only a moment before rushing to her mother's side. The reunion was quiet filled with tears and whispered apologies. Leah's mother held her daughter's hand tightly, as though she was afraid to let go again. I'm so sorry, Leah, she said through her tears. I never wanted to leave you. I just couldn't come back. Leah, still overwhelmed with emotion, simply nodded, burying her face in her mother's chest as the tears flowed freely. It was a moment of healing, though the path ahead was still uncertain. Luke watched from the doorway, his heart full as he witnessed the reunion. This was what Leah had been waiting for, and while the future was still unclear, there was hope. Leah's mother had a long road to recovery, but for the first time in a long time, they had a chance to be together again. Luke quietly stepped out of the room, giving them the privacy they needed. He knew this was the start of something new, a chance for Leah to begin healing and for her mother to make things right. In the weeks that followed, Leah's life slowly began to stabilize. Her mother's recovery was slow, but she was determined to get better for Leah's sake. With the support of social workers, doctors, and Luke's unwavering presence, they began to rebuild their lives. Leah still spent time at the shelter while her mother continued her rehabilitation, but the uncertainty that had once dominated her life began to fade. Throughout it all, Luke remained a constant in Leah's life. 
He had gone from being a cop on duty to someone Leah depended on, someone she saw as family. While Leah and her mother worked on their relationship, Luke found himself stepping into a new role in Leah's life. He was more than just a protector. He had become a father figure, someone who loved her unconditionally and wanted to see her thrive. Leah began to flourish, her confidence growing with each passing day. She no longer feared abandonment, and though her mother's recovery was ongoing, Leah knew that she would never be alone again. Luke had promised to be there for her, and he had kept that promise. In a way, Leah had found two parents, her mother, who was working to heal, and Luke, who had become the father she never had. For Luke, the journey had been transformative. He had never expected to find himself in this position, but now, looking at Leah as she smiled more freely, he couldn't imagine his life any other way. He had found a purpose beyond his badge, a love that went deeper than duty. As he watched Leah run across the park one afternoon, laughing with her friends, Luke felt a deep sense of peace. He had helped give her the life she deserved, and in doing so, had found something he never knew he was missing, a father's love.